Hello, <laughs> Mr. Red here. Today is August 15th, 2020, and you probably, no way you're gonna be able to guess where I am today. Today I'm in New Orleans. I'm in uptown, old uptown New Orleans, and I got a call from a brand new beekeeper, Chad, and he asked me if I could come give him assistance on doing a removal. He's never done a removal before. He's a brand new beekeeper, but his enthusiasm kind of swayed me into taking that ride across the lake, which I don't like doing. But he's so excited about getting these bees out of this wall that, that he just asked me to help and I decided to come over and help him. So like I said, we're in New Orleans and Uptown New Orleans is like this is an old part of New Orleans and I might be able to drive around and give you some of the stuff around here Shoot you some of the video around here, but we'll see about that But the um, we're only like I don't know a quarter of a mile from Audubon Park and, and Audubon Zoo Which is you know like big attractions here in New Orleans But the bees, like I said, they're inside the house. They're, they're renovating this house, which is why the bees need to come out. And again, I've talked this, told about this many times, how August is just not the right time of year to uh, remove bees due to the heat, the, the lack of a nectar flow, and the abundance of the hive beetles. I mean, they're just like thriving right now. But it's not a good time. So. Whenever it's possible, I always recommend and suggest that the bees be removed later during a nectar flow, which for us it'll be right around September, end of September, October. Plus, uh, it's a little bit cooler, so I don't mind getting out there at that time. But right now, it's early in the morning right now. Um, I think when I looked at the temperature last time, it was 85, 84 degrees, something like that. But it's going to heat up again, and we're going to get afternoon thunderstorms, very typical weather here in New Orleans. So by the grace of God, these little bees right here, they're going to go home with Chad. They're not going home with me. I'm strictly advisor and, and kind of like helping out a little bit. But other than that, we'll get these bees out of here. They'll go home with him and we'll have a great day of rain. Now before we go check out those bees, I got to talk about this shirt that I'm wearing. I received this shirt along with this hat 
and, and actually there's another ship too, from Ray and Holly up in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And they sent it to me because she said that when she saw this image that she thought of me. And look at what it is. <laughs> it's a guy on a bee and he's wrangling, huh? <laughs> How cool is that? So, you know I always talk about wrangling bees. Well, when, when Holly saw this, she thought about me and she said, I gotta send that to Mr. Ed. So she did. So not only did she send me the shirts, but she also sent me this really cool hat too. And what I like, what I really like about this hat is uh, as it's also got got the Wrangler on on the, on the front of it too, but on the side, look at that, beeha! <laughs> How funny is that? So <laughs> that is that is pretty slick. So Ray, Holly, thank you so much for sending me the shirt, the hat. That's really great. I really do like them. And one other thing, I got my fr <laughs> my friend Nicole Rob. Her birthday is to be on the 18th, and she asked if I would go ahead and give her a shout out and a happy birthday wish for her birthday. I know that the video when it's posted it's going to be way past her birthday but anyway Nicole happy birthday and I hope you have a great day. Now let's get inside and check out these bees. But because that bamboo <laughs> that's growing right outside of the wall and the alleyway is only about three foot wide I couldn't even get a, a shot of where the bees are. So you can see all this bamboo that's growing right here. It's covering the entrance of the hive. And this is upstairs of the building. Like I said, they're they're renovating this, this building. You can see they've they've got lots of stuff all around here. And this is this is the where you see the foam right there. Apparently the siding had separated, pulled away from the building, and that gave the bees an opening to get in. And they made their entrance to the hive right behind that piece of sheetrock right there. And there was comb behind that. And Chet had come over here few weeks ago and open this wall section of the wall up right here and remove it was just honeycomb in there and today he, we're, he's back and I'm back with him now and we're going to be removing the bees from the floor area right right beneath me and he's already opened up the ceiling below so let's get downstairs and I'll show you where the bees are downstairs and here's the setup Chad's got going on this is his bee back he made it's a eight frame bee back pretty nice stuff man I mean for a guy who's who's got a, a beginner beekeeper, he's done a really good job on it. And that's where our bees are right there. He's already opened up. Fortunately, it's sheetrock ceiling instead of a plaster ceiling, which most of these walls are. But there's probably lab stripping beneath that. And so there's some kind of, I don't know, MDF layer right there. And let me zoom in and you can see some of where the bees are, actually, some of the bees. There you go. Here's our cone. So Chad's gonna go ahead and use, I think, a, a, a sawzall. Cut this out, open it up, and we'll find out our bees. Woo, should be a good time. And here comes Howard. He, Howard's in our bee club, in, in the River Region Bee Club, and Chad is right behind him. He's the leader of this expedition. I, I, I'm just, I'm just an advisor. <laughs> so that's Chad. And so Chad, tell me um, exactly what, what's going on with these bees. So uh, the people who own this house uh, bought it to renovate it, and they don't care about the bees, and they said they were going to kill them, and I said please don't. And so this is my first uh, bee removal, and I watched all of uh, Mr. Ed's videos. <laughs> <laughs> built a box like his setup, sort of. Uh, I had a shop vac already, so I just did a different little upper setup. But um, I don't know, hopefully it goes well. <laughs> it will. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and do this wrangling, huh?
Now Chad has done a great job opening up that ceiling space to expose the hive. And oh my gosh, that thing, and this, this is an older hive and they have a little bit of newer cone at this end. So the cone that I removed uh, last week must have been more new. I didn't see it and that had all the honey stores in it. And you can tell at this end of the hive, this is their honey stores down here. And at that end, of course, is the brood down there. And just looking at it from right here, <laughs> that's minimally two to three year old cone, just judging by the darkness of it and how old it looks. So now Chad's gonna get his uh, head wet with honey, I think. He's gonna start vacuuming bees and removing cone. There she is, look at her, right here, look at her. Can you, let's see if we get up to the camera. And she is right, not that light, not the light helmet. This is terrible. <laughs> All right, let's see, that right there, let's see, right there. So here's our queen, walking around. Oh, yeah. Right on the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and, and pick her up now and Put her in a cage. Yeah. yeah. So we got our queen in our hand. And now we're gonna just drop her in the cage. And thank you, Jesus. Woo How about that, folks? Man, oh man, awesome sauce right there. All right, so Chip's gonna get back up there and start getting out more comb. Woo, that's exciting. <laughs> Just caught the queen. Oh my gosh, that's really that's really exciting. And Chip is gone, and look look how much he's already removed. I mean, and this was almost all honey in this part. And we that that was the third, I think, the third section of comb that we had taken out that had brood on it. See the second or third. And and Chip said, "I'm gonna take a break." So I said, "Well, I knew we were getting close to that queen. I actually thought I vacuumed her up before." And I said, let me, let me go ahead and do a little bit. In the first piece I cut out there, she was on the back side. So this is all we have left. There's probably gonna be five or six good pieces of, of comb in here that we'll be able to frame up. But a lot of that stuff is just so black and old, I don't know if we're even gonna be using it. So Chip's gonna get back at it and vacuum up some of these bees and cut the comb out. All of our comb is now removed. We still got a lot of bees and let me focus in on it, zoom in. So this is the entrance of the hive on the other side of that siding right there. And it's 
actually the entrance of the hive is above the floor above us. So I'm going to go upstairs now and show you where the, the entrance is. And we're going to spray some honey robber and we're going to run those bees down and Chef's going to go ahead and vacuum them up. So let's go upstairs right now. And here's the entrance of the hive. You can see where the spray foam insulation was eaten away by the bees right there. And they made that their entrance. So I'm going to just spray the honey robber on all these bees. Actually, I'll put this piece of plywood back up, spray it because I want to keep them in there and channel them downstairs because that way they'll all run downstairs. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, here they come. All right, let's go. Let's speak. Can you smell it? Yeah. Can you smell the almond? Yeah, it's all the next time. Yeah. So far, uh, best coaching in the world. Oh come on! Don't you? <laughs> Other than the coaching part, and we know I how. Mean, it's a project. It's but it's awesome. I mean, you're you're watching nature, to you know, right in, inches from your face, and uh, the the outcome's spectacular. It's amazing that there's you know a process to all this. Well, for for being a first time bee wrangler, you really did a great job. He. He removed all of this comb, and this is not a small hive, folks. This hive was large. And I'll show you the, the, the comb, but he's got all the comb out of here. We ran all the bees from the upstairs down here. I mean, yeah, we still have bees flying around, but we still have all those bees in the window still to back him up. But I want to get a shot of all our comb <laughs> and the War LB Wrangler right there. But we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Vacuum up all these bees in the window, and we're gonna close this video out. So while Chip's inside, finishing vacuuming up those bees, I want to come outside, let Howard um, explain a little bit, he's a lot more experienced than I'm, about the allergies and bees, since he started out not being allergic, and now he is allergic. So if you would give your experience of that. Sure, so I kept bees for about two years, and uh, got stung, no problem. And then one day got stung by four bees and had uh, anaphylaxis and had to go to the hospital and get epinephrine. And uh, after that, uh, it sort of triggered a lot of allergies for me. It wasn't just I was allergic to bees. Is that a typical thing that it triggers? No, not, nobody ever really heard of it. Nobody told me anything about that. I found one doctor that told me about uh, something called mast cell activation syndrome <laughs> and uh, started treating me for that. And it wasn't until I got on a lot of vitamin D that I was even able to have a normal day without terrible headaches. Um, but since I got stung those four times uh, and had anaphylaxis, I've been allergic to bees which I wasn't before, and also oddly sensitive to gluten, which I've never been throughout my entire life. Uh, so um, you keep offering me monk bread, and I wish I could take you up on the <laughs> offer, but um, uh, no monk bread for me. Yeah, they don't put, um, they put they, gluten in it. Yeah, they they add it. They yeah. add gluten in it. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, I went through desensitization shots, and the allergist said, okay, you're, you're great, you're desensitized. I said, no problem keeping bees. No, no problem keeping bees. And so I got myself stung on purpose. And uh, I didn't die. That was the good news. Good, good. And um, I think by desensitized, they mean something different than what we mean. So my hand still blew up to about double its size. You mean kind of like the uh, Dirt Rooster's watermelon? Hand? Yeah, I had Dirt Rooster hands. <laughs> and uh, But I didn't have Dirt Rooster bees. I didn't just like, get a whole bunch of Dirt Rooster bees all of a sudden. But uh, my hands got big. My hand got big, and uh, I was itching all over, but I didn't have anaphylaxis and I didn't die so I think what, what they mean by by desensitized is not uh, you get to get stung and everything will be fine 
it's you know no problem. It is you're going to get stung and you're probably not going to die. So the the overall effect of you becoming allergic, what what has that resulted <clears throat> in you in in your beekeeping career hobby? Well, oddly, I'm a much better beekeeper now <laughs> because I finally listened to your advice to leave my bees alone. <laughs> So you I, still keep these? Yes, I, I don't keep them at the house anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a farm and they're on the farm and it's only a twice a year thing for me and never alone. I'm always with somebody else and, and I'm always wearing a full suit. I never had a big full suit before. Uh, but it's and a show them what you carry um, whenever you... Uh, oh, yeah, and I got... Uh, it's not a gun. No, it's not a gun. <laughs> so, uh, an EpiPen and then in the cargo pocket down here, I've got emergency allergy meds. In case I get stung, I take the emergency allergy meds first, and then if I start to have anaphylaxis, I will use the EpiPen. So look at that. I mean, a guy's okay. allergic to bees, and he still can't stay away from, from wrangling bees. Because now today, like Howard only lives about about five blocks, 10 blocks from here? 20 blocks. 20 blocks from, from where we do it. And last night, I thought about calling and saying, Howard, come on over, but I forgot. So this morning at six o'clock when I was leaving, I said, oh, let me text him. So I text him and sure enough, <laughs> he had a meeting, but he'd rather wrangle bees than go to his meeting, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I just want to, to share that little bit of Howard's experience of, of the allergies, of how being not allergic, developing allergies, and then what he's doing still, even though he's allergic, he's still taking precautions necessary where he still can be a beekeeper. Way to go, brother. Right. Thanks. <laughs> so here is, the loot, <laughs> the booty. Um, I'll show you the bees first. I know the, the lighting isn't here too well, but oh my gosh, there's gotta be 15, 20,000 bees that, that he vacuumed up. That's a lot, and of course our queen is right there. Now let me show you the honey that we got. Now, the first, the first thing you're going to notice, besides the bees that are on top, and Chet's going to go ahead and get all those girls out there. He'll vacuum those out. But this is, this is all honeycomb, and I don't know if the camera's really picking it up, but this honeycomb is wet. This, you cannot put this comb in the, in the hive because the beetle eggs that are laid already in there, they will emerge and they will kill the bees. So this box of honey, this box of honey, and this box right here, all this honey, none of the, the comb can be framed up. So what he's going to have to do, he's going to do the, the crush and strain method. And once he does all that, he'll be able to feed the wax to the bees, let the honey bees clean the honey up. And then he'll be able to use this honey to then feed his bees. Now he's already got honey already from when he took the, uh, part of that hive out last week. So when these bees right here, when they go home and they get set up on their, on their brood comb right here, all this, look how dry. All of this is perfectly dry. There's nothing wrong with this comb in here. So there's no chance of beetles coming in here. And with only this amount of comb being in the hive, the bees will be able to patrol this and clean this up if there's any, any honey. There's very little honey here. But they will be able to clean it up when, when he releases the bees. So there's our comb and our honey as well. And Chef's got a big job ahead of him. <laughs> My, I just have to go back across the lake, but he's got to do all this work and then frame up this comb as well. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Here they are, the other two amigos. It ain't Charlie and it ain't Ralph. But we got the two, the brand new beekeeper, Chip and Howard. And Howard's great story about the, the uh, being allergic to bees, great, great information. And I hope some of y'all can use that stuff. So I really did want to get Chip's experience of your first bee wrangling experience. Um, I feel like I got a second chance and these bees got a second chance because um, the guys who were going to renovate this building didn't care about them and they were just going to spray them with chemical. And um, I 
would have made about 10 mistakes if it weren't for Mr. Ed. So, um, <laughs> well, that's, that's about mm, 10 <laughs> less than I would have made. <laughs> yeah. And standing up on that board on those ladders with slippery honey under my feet, um, I'm glad to be sitting still and uh, safe. And um, I know my wife is going to be glad that I'm coming home. <laughs> so, uh, with bees and honey. Yeah, this, this is a, a big success and a great way to spend a Saturday morning in New Orleans, that's for sure. Okay, guys, I think that's, um, that's good enough. Thank you so much. All right, so that's all we got. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching. I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, Howard, Shep, we're out of here until the next one. God peace.